By the mid-1700s, George Stubbs replaced John Wooten as the foremost horse painter. Stubbs had worked closely with physicians and illustrated a text on midwifery. From this work, he learned a layer-by-layer -layer dissection method that allowed him to create drawings with details not seen before. Over a period of two years, he patiently dissected horses in a lonely farmhouse in Lincolnshire. Stubbs published the finished drawings in The Anatomy of the Horse. This detailed knowledge of the horse's anatomy put the artist's considerable talents in much demand. And we can see in this painting of a famous horse called Hyena how well he's got his facts right. And this, of course, is what made Stubbs superior to any of the others that came before or any of his contemporaries or many of them that came afterwards. He got his facts right. The horses were correct and horse owners and horse breeders knew that and they could see it instantly. Stubbs didn't limit his attention to detail just to his painting of animals. He wasn't just painting portraits of a famous horse in this case. There's the most wonderful realism goes into the figure of the groom. Uh, I'm sure it was the case then, as it is now, that all grooms have this secret aspiration to be famous jockeys. And they start as lads, as they're called, around the stable. And here they are. He's obviously growing up a little bit and probably eventually he might finish up to be too big and too tall but look at the wonderful way his sleeves are just too short his jerkin is already he's growing out of it already and here he is patiently holding hyena here we also see Stubbs has captured the feel of the English countryside his landscapes are like no one else's they're clear and fresh and seen without artifice. They're not constructed. He doesn't borrow much from antiquity with the way, say, Wooden did in the pictures we saw earlier, but they're fresh and marvelously observed. But the other thing about Stubbs, never mind the realism, never mind the objective truth of the whole landscape, is the wonderful sense of composition, the way in which the horizontal is just slightly off the... the Rubbing down house is placed in just such a way, and in this case, the windmill on Newmarket Heath painted deliberately to intersect the arch of the horse's neck. Rather oddly, you do get these odd juxtapositions occasionally in Stubbs. One of the eccentric things about Stubbs was that he invented his own method of painting, which he hoped would become universal, and from which he obviously hoped to make some money, which was, of course, as you might guess, a total flop. There's something endearingly eccentric about Stubbs. He was a provincial. He came from uh, near Liverpool. He, he started off with very little formal training and really taught himself everything he needed to know. About 1775, the artist began a collaboration with the famous master potter, Josiah Wedgwood. The two worked closely to develop ceramic tablets that would be fired after being painted with enamel, so the work wouldn't fade or be changed. But the interesting fact about all this, it took Stubbs years, rather like his dissection of horses, it took years to work out how this should be done. Stubbs found ceramics quite receptive to the painterly effects of brushwork and texture. Wedgwood jokingly referred to himself as Stubbs's canvas maker. And, of course, what's this given us is an indication of how Stubbs wanted his pictures to look. All the other pictures that have been rubbed or been overcleaned or have suffered uh, have got a sort of rather loose, fuzzy appearance. But with the Wedgwood plaque, and there are many of them that he did, the details are absolutely uh, as clear as you can imagine. And this is how he wanted it to be. Stubbs' continued curiosity about the anatomy of a variety of animals is seen in his paintings of exotic animals. The artist would have seen these animals in private collections that were quite popular in London during this time. As a story uh, about Stubbs at the end of his life going off to hear, uh, hearing late at night there was a dead tiger somewhere in a menagerie, so he rushed off with a wheelbarrow and his young assistant uh, to, to pick it up and wheel it back to his studio.